Activating meridians. Alignment. Instability in field. Negative. Charge aligning the matrix field. Positive. Coordinates reached, Commander. Activate the Sade field. Activations of multidimensional engines. Launch communications probe. Power levels to maximum. Activate all dimensional levels of communication. Communication established. The voice you hear is known as Bob. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our destination. This is the last slave planet in the galaxy. Under all agreement, 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 under all rights, 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 under galactic law, 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 we now proclaim this planet free, 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 free. The dissension of the true human consciousness has begun. Energizing Shambhala Diamonds. The men, women and children of this planet are now set free. Free, 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 free. free. You have already reached Activate Shambhala Diamond. Critical mass. Hi everyone, uh, Bob here, uh, Dark City Show, but what we're going to do is we're just going to carry straight on uh, with Dave and, and his, this new show because we're all buzzed up about it. Um, so, uh, it's still same same thing, you can ring in, no worries at all, uh, the number is worldwide plus 44 161 298 zero 298 or alternatively you can get us on Skype. And that's Bob's backyard. Okay, now that is working at the moment. We don't know how. I think it's just, you know, positive focus of energy that's keeping my uh, my PC running. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, I'll flip it back over to Dave uh, and let him carry on with it. Um, so there we go. Uh, Dave, please, um, shoot away wherever <laughs> you were up to. Like, oh, yeah, th thanks, Bob. Yeah, I was just trying to pick up there on um, the 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 sort of Black's Law Dictionary and people worrying about the, you know, understanding a few of the different words, there's actually, you know, an act, uh, which is called the Interpretations Act. Um, and it, it, it basically it enables them in the magistrate's court system to, you know, use any, any word for any meaning. So they could be talking about anything unless, again, you stamp your authority on what language you are relying upon. You know, you don't, start arguing about things that you don't know about in court. So, you, it, for example, you, I wouldn't have an argument with somebody if they were speaking um, French, because I don't speak French. And I wouldn't have an argument with somebody, you know, who was speaking another language that I didn't speak. And legally, it's one of those languages. Pardon? In the, it's to define the word that they're using in the yeah, context. Yeah, but I mean, you know? what, what you want to say is that the language I'm relying on because mm. don't forget, you're the administrator. You are the person in charge in there. You're, yep. they're, they're trying to administrate without your consent. So you must get down right there and then. I am The language I am relying on 
is Dave's Dictionary, or the language I am relying on is the English, it's you know, the English, Oxford English Dictionary, or whatever you want to rely on. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's your own made-up language. Yeah. That's also, the language you are relying on. Also, also, I've been thinking, we know, we know the problem is with the birth certificate, yeah? We yeah. know the problem lies there. Uh, also, uh, is, is to, is to hijack all maternity awards, awards, <laughs> and, and give out pamphlets and tell them what the birth certificate really is, you know? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it's getting the message. But the, what you it's, don't it's to, want just to is create, people. like Yabba says, doubt. Yeah, but for them you don't, to investigate you don't it a little bit further. People must realize it's like a car. A car yeah. is a useful tool, you know, so that the, the title isn't necessarily uh, a bad thing or having a birth certificate isn't a bad thing i don't in my that's my that's just my opinion but it's it's a bad thing if you start running around and using it to identify yourself when you don't know what you're using it to identify yourself for and the same with the sin number or the national insurance number wherever you are you know around the world uh you know that again is is an identification of a sort okay. uh, i think that's the identification of a, of a taxpayer um, it's been called a pastor account and a few other different things. But, you know, you don't want to start, like I say, with the birth certificate. It's You don't want to stop people from, from doing it, but, you want, you know, you could maybe conditionally accept the birth certificate. Yeah, you could put yeah. conditions on the acceptance yeah. of it, you know. Yeah. Well, but should, should not everything be written like it is written on the birth certificate? Because, like... Like in Switzerland, I have everything in, uh, uh, in lowercase. the lowercase. Yeah. And uh, when I get bills from uh, like phone companies, uh, is uh, middle case, uh, what well, the first, yeah. no, the family name in capital and the rest in lowercase. And yeah. when I get the tax papers, everything is in uppercase. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, that's the, 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 and the uppercase is the corporate identification. Mm -hmm. That's because, the, you know, are you aware of Captus Diminuti Maximus and Minimus? Mm -hmm. With, yeah, with the, with the capital letters and, you know, the way that the name is written, they, it's Capitus Diminuti Maximus, Capitus Diminuti Minimus. Um, the, the Maximus removes all your rights and the Minimus, uh, removes half your rights. That's, what I'm led to believe um, in a sort of a courtroom scenario. You but now, should, should the name not always be written like it's on the birth certificate? Could, could we not go uh, if the, the name... I don't know how it is in UK, but like here in Switzerland, is the, 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 the papers where you can go to court, they are all like different than on the birth certificate. I don't yeah, well, but what I would be inclined to say, if they... That's the number one thing you do when you get in the room, you say that, you you know, you say right on there you've identified me as as an agent of the government and i'm not you know you can you want to be saying stuff like i i i rebut every single presumption that you're making you know the 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 way that they spell your name it has an importance um but that's only what they've identified you as when they've asked you to come there if you get in there and tell them who you are what capacity you're there in it doesn't matter if they you know write your name in crayons in a different color letter on each letter you know as long as you tell them who you are what language you're using what capacity you're there in and the fact that you are rebutting every single presumption that they're making on you you know that is that's all you need to know is who you are you know there, there is absolutely no doubt at all that the birth certificate short form was issued with malicious intent no doubt at all um you know, but here's another classic sort of Dean Clifford, you know, as it is done, so it shall be undone. You can go back and correct the mistakes. You know, there's been lots of attempts at doing it, but there there are ways that you can do it. The Attorney General, for the most part, will just ignore you. But a classic sort of, you know, where notary publics won't stamp paperwork that you want to write maybe to the Attorney General or the, you know, Registrar General or the you know, register of births and deaths or any any of those sort of people where you need to get stuff notarized and you can't get it notarized or you can't find a notary public to do it. And it's 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 brilliant and simple and it's to open a miscellaneous civil claim and then 
with the, you open a miscellaneous court file there and file a civil claim against whoever it is that's been ignoring you and once you've defaulted them and then every single bit of paperwork that you um, send them can then be notarized because it's on the court file and it is a matter of, of public record so they can't get out of it you know? and that's a very very simple way around getting you know these notary publics that for the most part in, in the UK I know that they're better you know abroad like in places like Canada um, sometimes in America they're better but in the UK they do not want to know they will not help you um, it's very very rare they're very few and far I think Guy Taylor has got a got a guy that does some of his notary work but that's another method that you could use but yeah going back to the birth certificate if there's any I can see there's a few people that have written on the, on this page I don't know if you want to add anything or if you want to ask any more questions or whatever about it yeah, or, I or tell me stuff because there's you know I'm no I'm no expert by any means. I'm always <laughs> always really keen to learn. So yeah, yeah, Dave, just wanted to step back a couple of things. Just when yeah, uh, the subjects have changed a bit, two yeah. points I want to make. Um, yeah, the first thing about your interpretations, and yeah. I just want to put across to people that a, a simple concept, and it's it, it sticks. It, it's easy to stick in your mind but it's great if you use it, is yeah. the concept is whoever creates a document it yeah. creates interpretation. So yeah. what, all these people that are writing notices off, if they're fighting corporations, doing anything, at the bottom of the letter, they should add a page of all interpretations on the page of every word. Yeah. And then when, when companies see that and legal yeah. departments see that, they know it's almost as what it's basic quantum language sort of thing. But yeah. you, you built the interpretations and you could say red means pink and apple yeah, yeah, means yeah. orange. Yeah. And you can completely bamboozle them out of the game just by using your interpretations how you want to interpretate whichever word. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's what I wanted to put across to the listeners No, as that's well. brilliant. And, and that's brilliant because, yeah, that your interpretation, if, if, if it's your document that you've created or, you know, in court, if you're saying something, your interpretation of what you're saying is the only interpretation that matters you you're in charge you know you're in charge of it so yeah that's a yeah. really really good point yeah yeah exactly and and the second point is rolling all the way back all the way back to um bob's mortgage issues yeah. and i've got just a bit of sus a suspicion the reason why the, her name's still on there is was what would have happened with the mortgage behind the scenes and what basically happens you sign a power of attorney over to the bank them to create any kind of document and they would have created securities in the Mrs. Hayden name. Yeah, that's and correct. Obviously, yeah, yeah. You say the divorce that, yeah. papers have overridden that, but that also will void those securities which will hold them in, in instead that way. So what they're trying to do is pull a bit of wool over the eyes by just doing trying to claim clerical error. Yeah, that's yeah. how I suspect that rolling. Yeah, and, I, and of course they're trying to trick him into sort of just carrying on and agreeing that, you know, he's the He's the, the principal debtor, I suppose. Yeah, because definitely. Because carries on once a certain amount of time has passed. I would have thought it would be very difficult to get judgment, you know, um, once he's gone a certain length down down the line. But yeah, that that makes a lot of sen sense actually with the security. Yeah. And, and again, I'd, I'd suggest the easiest way to play it as well is between is if, if you are going to go down the route to do this, I'd suggest that you set up a small trust between yourselves. And you be acting as trustee that give you absolute rights to demand all the paperwork because your trust, um, your trust rules of your trust demand for you to do so. And trust rules, rules higher than statute ruling and that to a, to a trustee. Yeah, I'm sure the trustee, would the trustee? Executor. Yeah, you would be the executor of the trust, which is the trustee, <laughs> isn't it? The the trust be the, yeah, the executor, administrator, or yeah, yeah, you that would be, that make a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, because, because, the, the, yeah, that was a really good point with the security, though, because you say like power of attorney, yeah, that you are, you do give the bank power of attorney, in a sense, I suppose, because they do. Yeah, they're acting on your behalf when they access the funds. Um, no, no, it's now, clearly, well, actually, now, it's now clearly. all I want to go away and think about is where do the funds come from? 
No, it's, it's clearly it's clearly listed in the in the terms and conditions. If you read a mortgage document, it will say there that you grant yes. absolute power to create any document. Yeah, it, it's there in the terms and conditions as clear as day. And the thing is, what they do is create by that's what since 1992 anyway, they've been selling and creating securities in your name, and then selling those securities on behind the scenes. Yeah, absolutely. I but use then, an argument. Yeah, go on. Sorry, sorry, Lee. That's no, okay. Yeah, I used an argument very recently, actually, um, in a case against uh, Santander. It was absolutely hilarious because I'm a sort of fabric fabricator welder by trade, and uh, I got to know about this case um, on the Saturday night, and the house was being repossessed on the Monday morning. So I did some sort of uh, bits and pieces of of research uh, into it, came up with a letter placed it on the court file on the Monday. The bailiffs were actually at this guy's house waiting to repossess. Um, there was an emergency hearing called, and I used the uh, the argument that the original instrument hadn't been sequestered to the court file. And I walked in there in all my sort of, like, scruffy, scruffy welding clothes. I looked like, you know, somebody they just dragged through a hedge and, you know, thrown onto the side of the curb and dragged in there, and this was the Santander guy was in there, you know, sort of looking down his nose at me, and it was it was really really funny and the the judge sort of read out this letter and i looked across at this and there a uh, guy and uh, and smiled at him and anyway he overturned the repossession of the house the house wasn't repossessed and on the way out i asked the santander guy if he thought i should get a pair of the flashy shoes that he had on <laughs> so that yeah and i mean because the original instrument if they if they do foreclose foreclose on a on a mortgage or anything um like that the original instrument has to be sequestered to the court file because otherwise that original instrument can can be used to attack you again so in effect if the bank cannot produce that original instrument and place it on the court file then any judge worth his salt would not would not judge to repossess so you know that's something else for for you to maybe think about yeah yeah, but I was just getting back to um, the the trust when I was saying about the trust is uh, we were saying about he pulled he's made a couple of payments already and you say it, it could be construed as as um, agreement because he made a payment and if he started saying the error now they've got a valid argument blah 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 presumptions and everything yeah if you go through the trust he's basically handing over all his things to that debt. To the thing, to to you, and you've got an absolute right because your trust agreement between you and and Bob would say that nobody can uh, uh, claim a debt from the trust without a, a wet signature document proving the debt existed. You've got an absolute right then to ask for that because it's your law, it's your trust law, which is higher than their law at that Doesn't stage. Their law, yeah. I, yeah, I've actually got that way. Yeah. I've actually got my documentation, the original signature that, we, what, that was on it. They've actually sent me, well, they've sent me the photocopies of those. Ah, uh, and it's crazy. actually on that very document, in the comments, where it says, uh, or explains, that I'm exempt, that all payments made into the account are to Mrs. Yeah? And that my payments are paid to her for myself. So the, the, the actual, it's, it, it's right there. It, it's, 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 and now I've only just come, I've only just come across this. I wouldn't have even realised if they hadn't have changed um, the name on it. And then later, after I've spoken to them, they have actually changed the principal debt. Now that is fraud, apparently. Uh, I sworn to a couple of briefs, and, and they've said that as fraud. They shouldn't be. They can. The names could change because of divorce and stuff like that. That can happen. Dark City Show, and uh, we jump a little from subject to subject, and we are, we are coming back to the to the strawman law situation. Uh, Dave, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, I think uh, Phil had uh, something to say. Yep, yeah, far away. Hi, Dave. Hi, Phil. How are you? Good, thanks. Yeah, I only came in about the last half hour of what you were talking about, but um, it was um, the thing about registering and not registering. 
And I, I agree. I, it, it's, they're not really questions; they're more comments on what you were saying. Really, I, 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 I totally agree with the um, with what you were saying about the birth certificate. I mean, these things um, weren't originally designed to deceive us. They, they were there to, to provide a level of protection. Um, it's just that they've been hijacked to do that. A friend of mine had a couple of twins recently. And he was yeah. uh, going down the whole thing. Should I, uh, should should I register them? And, uh, there's a lot of weird information around on some of the Freeman forums about regis, meaning you know to put in into the crown and that, and, and sort of uh, <laughs> dodgy etymology of the word and that. But yeah, originally it used to just be a, a record of live birth as opposed to registration. So yeah. maybe if people are in that situation they, they, they could ask questions like is there any difference between recording the birth and registering the birth because you're unhappy to record the birth but not not to register it at the moment until I've looked more deeply into it or whatever um, interestingly in the UK it used to be called the, the uh, PRO the public's record office uh, yeah. now, now it's of course the registry office so the, the, there is some kind of strangeness that they're doing, so a little bit of wordplay that yeah. they, um, for whatever reasons, so, you know, maybe sinister, maybe not, but um, that, that was the first point I wanted to make. Um, the other point was, um, <clears throat> well, two things really. One was about uh, Dean Clifford. You, you mentioned Dean Clifford's done uh, quite a, a detailed video about trusts and everything, and um, you know, how you don't want to be the trustee. The trustee person is the one that's taking the orders. You want to be the yeah. beneficiary and the um, administrator uh, of the account. I can't remember the, the terms, but... Yeah, uh, administrator, executor, yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, uh, Dave, uh, Dean Clifford does a, a very good video on that. And regarding Bob's thing about the mortgage, uh, Simon Spaniard did a whole video about this uh, thing where they um, put in the terms and conditions this thing about um, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, but it's it's to do with um, making decisions in your name, you know, yeah. um, and uh, how you should be requesting the original back, not a photocopy like Bob got, but the actual original back at the end of the um, at the end of the agreement because. They can just go ahead and keep using that and keep floating loans on it and all sorts. Um, yeah, absolutely. Basically, and and don't forget, there's there's you know there's case law to support that as well now. Um, there was a decision made made in um, New York, you know, sort of stating just that, which is what the you know the original instrument being sequestered to the court file. So it the that does kind of back up. Um, What's being said there, although the mortgage stuff is not really my sort of area of expertise, but I, w I was talking about the mortgage just as a sort of another example of capacity. Um, and then just going back to the um, birth certificate stuff there, you know, you're, I think you're now classed as in the custody of the Registrar General. Um, right. that's, that's what I believe anyway. You're so in you're, the world, Dave. Pardon? You're in the UK as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'm in the UK, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I, I, like, um, seen a lot of, you know, Dean Clifford really is the sort of, I, I do sort of, uh, I'm in contact with him quite regularly. And um, also there, Winston Schrout is brilliant, but he sort of takes a bit of, um, he's quite, quite difficult to understand um, if you're sort of new to it. Uh, and also Franco Collins does... Um, does some good stuff he's he explains very very clearly and slowly but all i was tr the, the main reason for me coming on um and doing this particular thing is in the a lot of the free men on the land stuff they are still absolutely you know petrified of the name and there's mass confusion as to what the name is and it's just uh, you know it it's you're not the name that's absolutely correct but the name is part of you yeah. but it's your you know it's yours to use you you created it i think you know, 
does a, he uses a very nice analogy with the hockey players, doesn't he? It's it's not uh, when he's saying who's that guy and he says oh that's Bob. Well, that yeah, it's really what position? Him. Yeah, it's it's your it's your um, your position, your your status, what you're acting as at the time. Yeah, yeah. What yeah? What capacity were you acting as? You know, and that's why what what I started doing as well with because I went out, like I said, I deliberately would do stuff to test. Uh, various methods but what i started to do then but on the you know on stuff like the you know if they gave you a slip for anything you know for speeding for producing your documents or anything like that just get just right on the slip at the time of the complaint i was not performing a function of government or or uh, you know acting as an agent of the crown and also put on that all claims rebutted right if you do that the first time they write to you the the main difference you see, and I was absolutely gobsmacked the first time I tried this, because the first letter that they write to you, because they'll still summon you, they'll try to do you no matter what they can, you know, no matter what, what you do. Um, and the letter that came out, they actually spelt my name as it should be spelt. So, you know, capital letter for the first name and then lowercase, and then capital letter for the second name and lowercase. So they did, So at that stage in the game... They they weren't you know brazen enough to identify me as the corporate agent. So it that that just writing that on that certificate certainly had an effect. And what they were trying to do then is to see if I was stupid enough to you know turn up and make general appearance. Right. Was that for a speeding ticket? Did you say speeding ticket? Anything they give you, anything that they give you and make you sign. Um, write as much stuff on on there, you know, and you can even go as far as to qualifying your signature. You know, yeah. um, you you could you know sort of put your signature on there and then put um, a R, you know, authorized representative. Right. Um, because you, what what you've got to try and get it get as well is that the authorized representative is never liable. Right. Okay, the authorized representative of the name is never liable. That's uh, quite interesting because I got my first speeding ticket in seven years about a week or so ago. And yeah. I'm actually looking into this at the moment. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, is that was that from a, like a, a static camera or was that an actual the yellow of... camera with lights on the road? Yeah, see, the best way to do that if you can, the best sort of place to start is something like Dean Clifford making it simple. He does like a presentation there where he sort of, you know, covers a hell of a lot of stuff. But if you can learn. Um, what the person is and how to use it, I would not even write a single letter to that um, to the speeding ticket to the yeah. camera office because for the mo- most part you're just writing to some you know somebody behind a desk who all they want you know is their money at the end of the week they don't they don't care yeah. about the law so <laughs> if the best thing to do is to sort of learn if if we've got any if we've got any court cases coming up I'm going to announce it on this you know on the show. And then, if anybody from the show wants to turn up in court, and I don't care if it's five hundred people or twenty people or five people, turn up at court, and where, and that way you can actually see it firsthand working, and then you can learn from that. Come. Whereabouts is the court, Dave? Where? Well, I'm I'm based South Wales sort of area, so. Uh, well, you know, I'm in it's, Wales, so you're not too far. Where are you? Sorry. Mid Wales. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, I, and I'm more than more than happy to sort of announce if we're going if we're going in, into any courts because I think that would be a, a, as good a way as any of you know the strength through unity thing, whereby if one of us is in court for any reason, uh, any statutory um, breach, then I think that you know it'd be great if sort of thirty people. I think it, uh, there's a guy Jay Noon who's on the on the Facebook, and uh, that's a method that they use because it. There needs to be witnesses to what is actually going on in there, you know. Yeah. That, so that's another but idea. I don't know. I've, I have been re- researching all this stuff for the last four years, and I'm 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 really comfortable with 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 all the um, sort of aspects of it. The but I've always been a bit dodgy on on the um, driving uh, thing because they they they. They do seem to have you over a barrel a little bit with the driving because you have, you know, got your driving license, you've got your road tax or whatever. So it's yeah. it's always been a bit of a, a dodgy one. Yeah, 
for the, I mean, the the police, that's why I said, you know, you don't pick a fight with a five-year-old with a gun. And, and, you know, I know our police don't have guns, but they've got tasers now. Um, and they think nothing. If you won't open your window or, or tell them who you are, they will think nothing of, of smashing your window and tasering you because they are just, you know, they do employ as stupid a people as they can. And that's not saying that all police are stupid. There are, you know, some, some quite reasonable, quite nice ones out there, but... Um, they will still take your car off you. Uh, yeah. it, you know, you, you've got no no way around it. I mean, Dean Clifford as well, no, you know, as, as well up on law as he is, he still had trucks taken off him, and yeah. you know, other people in this country have. They will still take just take your car off you, regardless of of what you tell them, because they don't give two hoots about the law, and they haven't got a clue about the law for the most part either. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I liked the Dean Clifford uh, video about uh, trusts, but then I yeah. went looked it up in uh, English law, uh, Black State it was actually, um, uh-huh. and there was just, you know, unsurprisingly, pages and pages and pages. What I was failing to understand was the different types of trusts, and the Spaniard uh, also, as, as well as the, the bank and mortgage one, he does a video on trusts. English trust law, and that's a little bit more relevant, you know. Um, once he explained that there's different types of beneficiaries and different types of uh, trustees, and that, but, but then I, then it started to make more sense to me. But yeah, I'm oh, sorry, I'm kind of jumping about from topic to topic here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it's um. Oh, I was like, what was I going to say about that there? Um, can, can I jump in? Yeah, yeah. I, I just um, w- one question. I, I think uh, uh, I don't know if you can answer, but uh, what I have a little bit of feeling is with the whole f- um, Freeman movement, with with that all cases and uh, the ones you see on YouTube and stuff. It is. It looks almost like the the, the judge. Uh, when he's, when he is too pissed off, he just, uh, abandoned the, the court and therefore, uh, you, you win. And now the question is, do we, do we have really the chances to go out of these things, uh, by court if we do the things correctly? Yes, we've, you know, we've done it. We've done it ourselves. Um, the, the last one I helped with last week, the guy was in for, it was, it started off to be something to do with, to do with driving before I, before he started looking into this sort of stuff. Um, he's had a few goes in court and been absolutely useless, like just sort of, you know, got frightened by the whole thing. But then out of the blue last week, he, he was actually told he was he would, could be in for five and a half weeks for, you know, breach of community service order. And he just, he was in there three minutes and we walked straight out. You know, it does work, but there will never, ever, ever be case law that shows this stuff works because they, if they create case law, they create something that ultimately will bring the system crashing down, you yeah. know. In of course, they, they, they will lose their power then. Yeah. What, uh, go on. What I, I've found that they do a lot is, as you say, they just throw it out because then that isn't a decision one way or the other. It's just the case was dismissed. It doesn't say you're guilty or that you're innocent, it says case dismissed. So yeah, they'll, not- they'll, they'll adjourn or they, um, they'll stay That's proceedings. Um, they, they will never withdraw. Not- so so that, that means uh, it, it is really case per case. You, you will never have like uh, something that the people can, uh, can apply and it, it, it will be like... The, Change a change in a law, so it, it really means that everybody who who want to fight the the or fight uh, want want to want to redraw f- from that court, he have to do it by his own. Yeah, they they won't ever allow. Um, I don't think they'll ever allow case law to be created in this country. You'll see. You know the clerk isn't stupid. She's she's the clerk for a reason, and they will just withdraw. They they won't they won't just withdraw. They will stay proceedings, or they'll they'll adjourn, and then you'll never be asked to go back again. But there is some case law that supports this in um, Canada and in America. But um, 
again, if you start bringing if you start bringing case law into a magistrate's court in this country, they'll just say that case law is case specific, and that is you know that is true. So the, the, that's sort of the, the reason you know that what, what I'm trying to say is with once you understand what the person is and how to use it, there is, there is no way they will be able to to succeed against you. They they just they, they can't even proceed, you know. So they're not going to have any success against you because you know, you once you know who you are and how powerful your person is, mm. and how many capacity you know how many capacities your your person can operate in, you're going to be able to drop kick them. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Uh, I think BJ have uh, something to ask or say. All right, Dave. Yep. Um, it's it's about it's about the system how it operates. Everything base, basically works on a contract with the government, yeah. Yep. And also, if you understand the true value of you, then you can determine how the contract is played out in in their world. So you can cut cut across certain parts of the contract that that they are trying to push upon you, and you cross it and sign over it. So you can dictate the contract. Is that what can is is that possible? Um, the, I, from my personal because it experience, is a contract, isn't it? It is a contract, but it's it, for the most part it's invisible contracts that you don't really mm. you don't really see. But if you start defacing or crossing out any of the material on a on a court document, say say a magistrate's court sends you a document. Uh, and on the obverse side or the reverse side, you deface anything. Um, you put yourself in dishonour. So yeah. you've got to be a little bit careful of that. The the most successful way is just you know viva voce they call it, which is the spoken word. Um, and and all law is all law is first auricular. Um, so all law is first spoken. So, good, so yeah. the best way to to deal with something like that is to learn how to do it and just yeah. stand in there you know uh, you want to tr- you want to be avoiding going in there as much as you can but if Basically, you've got to go, if you've got to go in there then once you know who you are you can yeah. literally just deal with it but but if if somebody coughs in there if somebody yeah. coughs you get it on the record if yeah. somebody blinks you get it on the record you know i've been to one where the crown or the de facto crown uh was refusing to speak, and he, his head got you know gradually lower and lower and lower during the uh, during the the proceeding that they were attempting, you know. And I kept and I kept putting it on the record, you know, for the record, Crown is refusing to speak. For the record, Crown is not prepared. For the record, Crown hasn't got any paperwork. No. Everything that happens, get it on record. If you don't get it on record, it didn't happen. It didn't and happen. they will, you know, they'll do whatever they like to you, and. Th- you you can you can complain and and write letters and yeah. such like, but unless you got it on record, they can just look down and go, no, nah, that didn't happen. Yeah, it's the court of records, isn't it? Yeah, but you if got they to... don't appoint one, you can appoint one yourself. You can, yeah, you can appoint a court recorder, yeah, oh, yeah, court reporter. Yeah, because right. that's 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 very very important. Like you said, they don't they'll deny everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you got to you got to think as well. If if these courts are so fair and so just, and you know they're there for the greater good and all of the stuff that they claim, how come you're not allowed to record the the proceeding yourself? Hmm. Uh, Prajna, come again. Uh, yeah, I was going to comment that you know it's all very well all this. Um, all this, you'll be invincible if you know your person and all that kind of thing. But, you know, they took our home off the road unlawfully and and so on, despite the fact that I knew what the law was and I even told them on the spot what the law was. And, you know, the other thing is, from what, what you've been saying tonight, it seems you've spent an awful long time in court arguing with the bastards, you know. And actually, I don't want to spend a long time in court arguing with them. And not only that, it, it's not just knowing the person, is it? It's knowing a whole shitload of stuff about what 
the court can do and what the court can't do and what you can do and what you can't do and where to look for it in law, whether you have to go back to the fucking Magna Carta and all this kind of stuff Don't forget when you should be living. Paper, yeah, Don't and, and, and duck egg blue paper with stamps, one penny <laughs> stamps in each corner and all kinds of magic pocus pocus. But the thing is that somehow or other we've got to live with the people who are enforcing the law. And they're not enforcing the law anyway. They're enforcing all kinds of corruption because when you've got corruption at the top, you've got corruption all the way down. Yeah, so I do. The first thing you've got to do is start uncorrupting, is it not? Well, first and you've got to make sure you've anyway. got to uncorrupt yourself and you've got to throw out all those those ideas that there's some kind of magic spell you can cast. There's not a magic spell you can cast. All you can do is start to become real. Withdraw from all their fantasy, their fantasy about food, about medicine, about all kinds of things. Withdraw from that whole fantasy and start to get real. You know? all and you don't need a whole lot of to do that. You just need to know. I would say rather than know your person, know yourself. Yeah, and I might not um, be um, the first person who's that's, ever that's said that. That's not to say that we don't have experience in court, because we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. when, when you actually choose an entirely different lifestyle than is lived by most around you, you kind of you stand out a little we, bit. <laughs> yeah, we expect to spend time in court, and we do spend time in court. Last case... They threw out on the technicality because they didn't want to address uh, the, the fact of unlawful arrest. So they just ignored that, pushed that to the back of the things they were going to discuss and never got round to discussing it because they'd already thrown it out on the technicality before that. But they're not going to get away with that. Um, is that, is that cases <laughs> no. that you were bringing then? Or... Oh, yeah, no, that, yeah, that, that was don't get me wrong, I'm just saying that there's a magic, there's a magic formula. I'm, I'm just saying for the, you know, for the statute stuff, it, it's not, you know, like I said before, there's no doubt at all the police will take your car off you if you haven't got insurance and all of the stuff that they say you should have. Um, that doesn't mean to say that there wouldn't be recourse. Well, actually, actually, that's not true. There are only three reasons that they can take your your vehicle off you. One is that you're not insured. Yeah. Second is that you're not licensed. And the third is that you use it to cause harassment, alarm, or distress. Yeah. Now, those are the three reasons they can. What they can't take it off the road for is because you refu refuse to pay road tax. Yeah? They don't yeah. have any authorization to do that, yeah, and they even admit that they don't, they, they admit that's a DVLA problem and not a, a, a police problem, uh -huh. but do you know, they still will take your car off the road uh, if they think that it's not MOT, um, and they'll say, as they did to us, that they were doing it for a visor inspection, but actually, they can't do that. The only person who can do that. In fact, he can't even do it. All he can do, a voser inspector can come along and inspect it. Or a policeman who's been authorised by the chief of police to carry out DVLA type inspections can do it. And they have to issue a form, PG9, which they didn't do. Because really they were taken off the road for tax and they were taking us off the road for, for refusing to be part of their system, even though I, I explained to them that spiritually I can't be part of their system. You can't involve a, a spiritual man with criminals, can you? No, no, and, and that's what I'm saying. They will, they will still do stuff that is unlawful, um, but you don't go making it, you know, you've got to stand up and start making a stand. And I think if people, if people in masses started to stand up the only thing that's stopping people stand up and and start you know getting this world back to some sort of a you know i don't know what you'd want to call it really uh equilibrium <laughs> well yeah however you want to however you want to describe it the only way you're going to do that is by alleviating people's fear because people do do have a lot of fear and i think that if you could give them a you know help in some of the courtroom stuff and 
you know, how to sort of, you know, stand up for their rights, then I think that you you would yeah, certainly absolutely. start to help with the fear. Um, but I think there's something to be said as well. I mean, we, we do spend time studying law, and, and um, but when we actually go into court, it is for the one sole purpose of speaking our truth. Yeah. Uh, t- sorry, sorry guys. Give me a- sorry guys. Somebody have uh, the speaker loud. I think it's Dave. You need to turn down a little bit the volume of the speaker. If not, oh, yeah. no light coming on, Dave. Um, it's feedback being caused at Prize, and it sounds like a microphone fault or something. There's no other light. I'll adjust my sound settings. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I get lights flashing when the feedback, John. So, when you've been to court, can you give me some examples of of maybe what's happened in the courtroom? Say, say, you know, give me an example of what you went to court for, what you said, um, and and what happened. Because I'd love to hear that, you know. Uh, from us. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, we were <laughs> yeah. checking us. Um. Uh, um, are our levels fine now? Uh, you need to talk a little bit and see if you're echoing back. Really. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. It's not Dave. It, it, it's not the normal echo. It sounds like you've got something metal vibrating very close to it. It's the best I can describe. Uh, it. Time to turn it off and turn it on again, babe. Oh, uh, we can't. We, we're doing other things, but I can be quiet. That's the yeah, best way. You. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Carry on, please. Uh, we'll we can't, to- uh, Dave, uh, Phil had uh, uh, a question. Yeah, far away, Phil. I I would have liked to have heard, heard those uh, what happened in court with them though, and and what arguments they made. But I'll take Phil's sort of question or comment uh, first. They they will come back. Yeah, but we can yeah, take. I, um, it was to do with the, um, basically what Prajna was saying and what you were saying earlier. I mean, what they should do and what they do do are often you know completely uh, different. Um, and and this was what I was going to use as a kind of segue between the Kavorak conversation. <clears throat> There's a legal defense called um, lawful excuse, and one example of lawful excuse is compelled by faith, and I, I think what Prajna is doing, and not to speak for Prajna, but you know, um, what, what I see Prajna is doing is, um, you, you know, uh, with him saying about being spiritual, if that his spiritual beliefs didn't agree with that, then that is, as far as I understand it, a lawful excuse, you know. Um, it's it's been used with things like um, conscientious objections, you know, people who didn't want to go to war and stuff. It, it is a viable uh, legal excuse. If you say, you know, this goes against what I believe, then that is a, a, a legal excuse for you to not comply with what they're asking you, because... They're at odds. You've got a conflict of interests between <clears throat> trying to provide them with remedy and also stay true to your um, beliefs. And I think Callie summed it up really nicely there. With saying, all you can do really when you do go into court is to speak your truth. That's it, basically. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree with that. And the, the advice I gave the guy last week, who was useless on a few previous occasions, is if he wasn't sure, speak from the heart. But, however, the types of people that they, they deliberately employ police now to, to not question, so they would just, you know, probably still steal your car off you and say, well, that's a good argument for the court, or, you know, you can make that argument at court, but I'm just doing my job, and, you know, we've heard that I don't know how many times. They, there's, I think there's a case recently where they judged a guy, um, it was in the States, they judged a guy too intelligent to be in the police, you know, in the police force. So they do deliberately employ the right sort of people that will not question and they will keep stealing people's cars and, you know, by the fact that they're doing that, that then creates the, you know, the corrupt part of the insurance where whereby you absolutely have to have insurance and no matter how much insurance costs, you've got to buy it unless, you know, the police are going to come and, you know, it's one of the reasons they can they can take your car off you and you know, leave you on the side of the road or whatever they choose to do. Like, they tried to spot check a guy I know and he only wound his window down a little bit and, you know, they ended up, like, tasering him and hitting him and he was 
pretty disabled as well. He's got, you know, unstable fractures in his back and they, you know, they locked him up for, you know, 13 or 14 hours. So they, they will just keep doing to people what they're told to do. Um, and that's part of the, the thing that I want to do is try and help people's fear, help people, you know, not fear this type of stuff. And I think we can all start to, you know, unite then. Uh, I, I think one thing is also important to not fall in the in the paradigm of of, um, of hate or of uh, aggression. To talk them uh, talk them in a way that that you talk to the human. That uh, personally, uh, when I had uh, a fair with police or even with church or so, I I, I, I talk to them as 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 they are human. Mm. Uh, I don't make in doubt that they are responsible for their. Uh, function that they represent, but uh, I don't accuse the human what he is doing. He he just want to feed his, his kids and mm. uh, and uh, and go on his life. I think that is also a, a big part in the, all this case that not to aggress the people or fe- feel aggress or not to feel any fear. I think uh, Prajna is back, and uh, maybe he can talk more about the case he had. Yeah. Uh, well. I do agree with that, what you said about the police as well, by the way. I, I always talk to them in a civil manner, um, and I think Rob Menard would, uh, he's, a, he's a great believer in that as well. So, yeah, just comment on that. But, yeah, go ahead, Prajna. Carly. All right, well, yeah, bear with me, because I'm a bit emotional tonight. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm trying to decide where to start. This is the problem, so I might as well start with, um, I met Prajna 18 months ago now, baby, yeah? Yeah. And, um, and, and we kind of joined, and, and, well, that was that, so off, off I went, ah, that's not the beginning, oh, fucking hell, baby, do you want to do it? I am a mess tonight, <laughs> and I'm sorry, I've, I've had a really emotional day, my dad's died, most of you know, and, so I am listening and I'm tuning in and I'm popping up with stuff, but I'm drifting off as well. So sorry. <laughs> no problem. And she's had a nice day, which always helps too. <laughs> <laughs> well, has in this instance. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm. I used to have a motorhome, and uh, I got this motorhome. I, I actually gave everything that I owned to my boys and said. You can have all that responsibility and all the mortgage and everything that comes with it. That's yours. I'm going. And uh, and off I went in this motorhome with no uh, tax and no MOT in order to challenge them to give me a forum to point out the injustices and nonsenses that are the law in this land and the corruption and everything that's involved with it. And I've had many different interactions with the police, probably not as many as people might imagine, uh, but they've been mostly good ones. Yeah. You know? and, and we were perfectly polite and pleasant, even when they were still in the van, really, except they tried to drag... Carly bodily out of the van. Head first. Uh, yeah. Because she wouldn't, she wouldn't come out. Uh, well, well I, I told them it was my home, and, and if you're taking it, you're taking it with me, in it? So, so they tried yeah. to drag me out. And they'd already arrested me and even handcuffed me, despite me pointing out that the, the Association of Chief Police Officers codes and use of handcuffs at paragraph 1.2.1 says that every use of handcuffs is an assault and must be justified in the circumstances. That merely having authority for their youth, youth, use, <laughs> is <laughs> not, not considered justification. justification. So, you know, despite all pointing that out, the most polite manner they cuff me anyway. Admittedly, they uncuff me when they put me in the car, you know. Um, I, I left my cup. So in the car. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bastard. Yeah. yeah. Told me I, if I didn't like it, I should go and, you know, live on an island somewhere. Ah, <laughs> you have one of those. 
Yeah, I had I had one of those at the hospital. Did you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he, he's, so we had a lot of adventures. Yeah, yeah. This it's, is what happened when our lives collided. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is, this, that, uh, is, is that Prajna? Uh, is that is that not the? Um, is but you what you say that is like when the police uh, came that it, it it didn't work like how how you wish the the things to to work out. But is that not also because you you maybe applied for some paperwork that you should not sign in uh, and so because I had uh, almost the same. I was in front of the judge and I tried to. To explain my my stuff and thing, and they don't want to hear shit, you know. So is, is that not also because you maybe uh, you you didn't search enough before the, to 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 know no. what what was really going on? Because I I signed some stuff I should not sign before. That was what what no, happened. No, that's all no, that's all null and void. That's yeah. all utterly meaningless. So we're all they deal behind. with the yeah. the human. Being with with me and Prajna now in the moment, they deal with you. you deal with them now when 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 you interact with them. I mean, just, know, it's just, just about living it yeah. and being completely it with everyone. You know, um, no pretense. Yeah. And but doing it intelligently. You know, we've studied a lot. We obviously we we um, we're not stupid. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't say that. No, that was just a question no, because I, I, I didn't prepare home. my <laughs> Sorry. They've taken our home away, and that's a rather cruel and unusual punishment in anyone's book. They've denied us a home. But they're picking on the wrong hippies, this is the point. We're fucking formidable, aren't <laughs> <laughs> we, babe? <laughs> uh, Dave, are you still around? <laughs> yep, I am, yep. Yeah, I'm just listening on to, um, you know, what happened. So that kind of goes along with what I'm saying, though, is that, that they do, um, they will still take, you know, your car or whatever if it doesn't have or van or motorhome. And that is, you know, despicable for them to do that. Um, but I think when the people, I'm, what I'm hoping is that when the people don't fear anymore and when they do, hopefully one day somebody in the police force will wake up to you know to the fact that they are actually doing wrong um by carrying out these things then that's hopefully that something that can change maybe i, I you know i don't know i'm i'm just trying to help people be you know less afraid of them but make no mistake they uh, it, at this moment in this country i haven't seen um, a case where they haven't taken a vehicle off somebody. It does happen in America. Um, they do walk away and leave you alone if you've got the right paperwork in place. Um, and in Canada, they do, you know, go away and leave you alone. I mean, and with the, you know, with what Prajna was saying about the handcuffs as well, I mean, from the moment they, they number one, they use their lights to pull you over. Well, you know that's non not emergency, and the lights are there. To, you know to be used in an emergency. Um, they all, it's also an unwarranted arrest because any detention is an arrest. It's a form of arrest. You know, and that's what I said. If you can get to court, and if you start arguing about their laws in their sort of jurisdiction, then you're just wasting your time a bit. You know that the, the important thing is to not really, when you get into the court, to know enough not to even care about the you know, their laws and stuff. And I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't sort of, uh, I, I wouldn't want to be belligerent to the police and I wouldn't want to be rude to them. You know, I would, I would treat them as I'd expect to be treated, but you know, and kind of pity them a bit, I suppose, if they're, if they're doing, you know, these, these sort of, uh, horrible acts to people, then, you know, hopefully one day one of them will sort of wake up and say, hang on, you know, this can't be, this can't be right. I, I can't think that they think that all of them think that it's, right to leave, you know, some old lady on the side of the road uh, in the pouring rain um, or take somebody's home off them. It, it's just, you know, we know it's fundamentally wrong, so we've got to start trying to trying to fight it, trying to get rid of people's fear, trying to get rid of people's fear to, to sort of stand up for their rights. But don't forget, if they act unlawfully, they're not, their, their corporate badge does not protect them from a civil claim. 
a civil claim in their personal capacity and it comes back to capacity again. You know, you can file a civil claim against these people if they act unlawfully. Because